Hail and well met. Welcome to the season finale of Quadrilateral, our Star Wars actual play here on the Dungeon Scrawlers. This is episode four of four, and everything comes to a head here. I'm so excited. I'm Eric Scott to be one of the members of the Dungeon Scrawlers, one of the founding uh, sages, if you will. Um, Jason is the GM. He talked me into this game, and I'm glad he did because it has been amazing. So true, it's hmm. true on both counts. Talked you into it, and I think delivered. So it's good for both. So season finale. What are you? Uh, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? How's it? Yes, this is how's it adjacent land. <laughs> I, I'm. I've been honestly. I've been excited all day uh, because this is what we've been building to. This is you and I talked before about uh, you know knowing how it would begin and knowing how it would end, and I always knew how this story ends. And now I'm so excited to be able to see that come to fruition, to share that with the audience now, and really um, hope that they just um, enjoy everything that's come and and get to enjoy the the players seeing the players one more time as well and actually getting to uh enjoy their emotional roller coaster that i'm about to take them on one more time right um that's the other part that's uh just really exciting getting to getting to relive that a bit vicariously through them now is, is you know when you're in the moment you're focusing on your players but you sometimes don't always appreciate how they're feeling and, and what they're what they're seeing and hearing and uh and as our uh, Iktochi mechanic can attest, um, that uh, yeah, there's 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 some heavy hitting moments here at the end, um, and now I get to just Jason makes me cry <laughs> more really than does. once. <laughs> and now now I get to sit back and actually enjoy it uh, <laughs> along with the audience at the same time, um, which is which is super enjoyable, uh, and I'm looking looking forward to that. So totally, totally, and. Uh... And this is May, who plays our um, Atochi uh, engineer, like uh, Jason said. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Vil Raza, who is, well, I mean, I don't want to say the main character, because obviously there are four main characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like a very important character. I think we're They're all, all very important. important. They're yeah. all very important. <laughs> like... It's a true game. Like it's it is, and I feel like the story is not the same without all of us. We are a package of cinnamon rolls. You can't just have one. Exactly. You are a four sided <laughs> shape. Are. All sides have to be there in order for it to be quadrilateral. Woo. Woo. Anyway, yeah. yeah, it's it's thematic and it's uh, very appropriate. Yeah, and crying is a free action. <laughs> Angston. Yeah, crying crying <laughs> is uh, sometimes a debilitating action. Yeah, you don't have to declare that at the beginning of the round, so which is good. So. Yeah, that would definitely slow us all down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this. Part of me is like, no, because that means it's over. But at the same time, like, it's such, it's so good. Mm -hmm. it, it really <laughs> is. And I've been telling everybody that this is the season finale, not the series finale. Who knows? There might knows? be another season in the offing. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't say no. There you go. Well, in fact, I'm probably going to harass Eric and be like, hey, 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 Star I, Wars. I, I, got, <laughs> I got no control over you four dynamic individuals. Like, you know, no. I, I need, uh, we obviously need all of you if we can get you. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, it's it's been really fun and you know, just really rewarding. I've been playing RPGs for 30 years now, and this is one of the most exciting ones that I've that I've played in, that I've watched, that I that I the most hype. That's that's a term you kids use. Hype. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really remarkable. I'd like to ask me mm. like, when you accepted the open call and ended up being one of our one of our trusted members to come and join us hype then versus hype coming into episode four a couple of months later it was a few months process to get to that point where we were now yeah. playing <clears throat> what was what was that for how did that feel for you because I, I would be curious to know 
what 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 you felt at the beginning versus what you were feeling as we as we were on the eve of the end. Yeah, I would say at at the beginning it was very much a oh okay they emailed me back that's cool, um, and then it turned uh-huh. into like. Well, you know, these are all, I've never met any of these people. This could go weird. I would say our session zero really helped because I was like, oh, good. No one here is like, excuse me, I've arrived. Do you know what I mean? Like there was never a vibe of, you know, hi, I'm the main character, whatever. And so it was just sort of like, once I got to meet everyone, it was like, okay, I have to do this because I'm now obsessed with everyone here. Not obsessed, but like (laughs) everyone has this like, very fun personality so and now I think it, it literally has just been going up ever since then especially because we had to um we had to wait so long because it was one of those where like you know the biggest the hardest part of you know TTRPGs is scheduling there right. is no boss that can ever beat that <laughs> um so trying to find that time where we all could sit down and play was really tough and then it was just like once we got our characters established and then seeing our gm get excited where it's like where they're like you can see like this the finger steepling happening even if it's not do you know what i mean where we're like oh this and that and the other thing and then jason's just like mm-hmm. like letting it and so <laughs> there, there was a little of that there was a little of that not gonna lie yeah not in an evil way but in a, oh okay i oh. know what i'm gonna do Definitely. Um, well, all of us and all of us here are, are game masters and all of us here understand mm-hmm. what it's like when you plan something when you hope for something to happen but the players need to need to get there as well they need to join you there and when it happens great when it happens organically when the players follow the breadcrumbs not because you're leading them down a path but because they are picking right. up exactly what you're laying down and they're intuitively just going there that's phenomenal. And that happened multiple times over all four episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't have been happier at times. The, the 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 choices that the players made and the um, actions of the characters and how well it just seamlessly fit into what I was hoping was going to happen. Yeah, I think that it was only, what was it? The end of episode two where I threw the monkey wrench in where I was like, I'm staying. And yeah. there was that moment that I flashed across your eyes and I was like, oh no, I've done something bad. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I yep. hope we can recover from this. <laughs> Not bad, just unexpected. Just unexpected. Like you have a good, like I said, you have a good poker face, but then there's those moments where it's like, mm, like, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, the but it's, really, it's been one so of good. the really great scenes that happens in episode three. Mm-hmm. I don't think happens if you don't make that choice in episode two. Yeah, because part of me was like, oh, okay, I I love. I think episode three was my favorite. I mean. Episode four, it's also good, but I th- I do think three was is my favorite just because so much happens, and like, and not that it's necessarily like we're running around and doing all these crazy things, but like the intensity of the things that happen, and it really like those stakes are set up. Um, so uh, I think episode three is a really good example of embracing uh errors or mistakes like making those on the spot choices and them not being maybe the optimal choice like maybe Mm -hmm. you should have run away right but you didn't Mm -hmm. and then we all went with it like that that was what the story embraced and you know it turned out great yeah and it's fine i had two point with me nothing can go wrong (laughs) and having two point with you even more revelations became known. exactly yeah we're and then right. well the hard part is then not acting on it and us trying to remain like calm and be like oh everything's happening i don't want to imply that <laughs> you made a mistake may what yeah. i'm saying is yeah, that yeah you just did something unexpected mm-hmm. that the story wasn't necessarily leading toward so yeah. it's just one of those it it's an unexpected twist that evolved organically from the story mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of a rare thing in narratives to come yes. up with a with a twist that you didn't plan and you didn't set up, right? So yeah, you can't well, you can't really see those twists coming because you know they don't have the foreshadowing and setup. They're just really left turns, which is great. Like I think I think it produced good stuff. 
and every yeah. every advice list that you ever see for game mastering, right, is improvisation and the ability to just be flexible and adapt in the moment uh, is a is a fundamental skill that all mm -hmm. good game masters uh, develop over time. Some faster than others, but it's something that every game master has to be able to do if you want to have spontaneity. If you yeah, if, and that's what we're talking about, right? Is spontaneity. Yeah, and I think all of you did such a good job with that. Yeah, while that scene was happening, I was kind of running it through my head where I was like, I think she'd stay. And then I was like, mm, what? Well, you know, and so it was kind of this like back and forth. And I was like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Um, yeah, I like the spontaneity. As a GM, I have rewritten scenes in my head while they're playing out. So mm -hmm. um, where I'm like, oh, they figured out the bad guy. Yeah. Whoops. Right. Right. <laughs> let's figure, you know, like let's, you know, or it's like, Someone rolled a nat 20 on something they shouldn't have been able to do. And it's like, uh -oh. okay. what happens? Because <laughs> you, you don't want that to, you don't want them to feel robbed. Right, right? exactly. You, you want them to feel like their massive su unexpected success actually does have a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was learning something that you might not have learned otherwise. And I got so. to sass a imperial jerk. Oh my God, that so. was amazing. Thank you. That whole, yeah. that whole scene was just chilling and and unsettling and great. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, because it was one of those where I was like, if I was a teenager who was upset and this jerkwad is in my face being all like monotonous, like this is his everyday, like, oh, it's no big deal to me. It's like, well, this is my life, you butthead. I'm a 19 year old. I don't. I'm never going to die. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was, That's why I, was quite proud I enjoy of that. How that scene went too. I, um, I really enjoyed getting to play that persona. And I think it, uh, it, the fact that you guys are commenting on the fact that it, there was real tension and that, and that I'm, I'm sure may in the moment was, was feeling it as well. Um, but even for Eric uh, as a, as a passive observer to, to pick up on that, yeah, I was just it watching them all go down, and I was that. like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> I like that. It it means that the, the what the you know the mood I was going for was 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 communicated well, and the character was believable, and not just not just cartoonish or, or one dimensional. Oh Definitely. yeah, no, it was it was very much a like, this is what I imagine an imperial like paper pusher who thinks he's better than he is. Kind of like, no, these are this is like it's like God jerk like <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not doing anything outright harmful he's not torturing you he's not like threatening you to your face it's just he's acting on what he thinks is supposed to do. it's like that's worse somehow like oh it's like such a good bad guy because then you know something bad happens to him like you know not breathing you don't feel too bad about it at least i didn't no no, you did not. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, I, uh, I, I very much appreciated how um, Jason grounded the story at multiple points in how the various characters were feeling and thinking, and that's especially uh, important with uh, with Vilra. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, we're kind of dancing around this thing, and we're going to continue dancing around it. I don't want anyone to think we're going to be upfront about this. But um, if you are also intrigued by that subplot, like I was, like everyone in the group was, then mm -hmm. uh, I think this is going to pay off pretty well. You know? Yeah, and that particular subplot was not shared with the other players, which I think made it more important. fun. Yeah, made that reveal a little bit more... Well, and you can also tell because Mara gets the zoomies when stuff like that happens and you'll see them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, that's how you can gauge. Yes, I knew a little bit that it was going down, but I didn't know exactly what form it would take. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you ended up in the room with that guy, I was like, oh, I did not anticipate this. <laughs> and it was it was ooh, real good. Mm hmm. And I, I think it's I think it's such a great, heavily Star Wars themed moment. Like every, it's identifiable yes. for even casual fans. 
but for people that you know like to watch actual plays and then people like star wars and we're kind of marrying the two and, and bringing them together in in this particular story um giving them those little tastes of the familiar but to eric's point right like it it didn't just happen immediately and it wasn't just flippant or casual we laugh about it it was mm -hmm. played for for the weight of what it was and that that was what i was going for is if we're going to have a, a reveal of that of that you know magnitude i wanted to both hopefully be a surprise when when it happens but then then be like like a bit of a, a bit of a gasp of, you know like you oh yeah i did not see that coming and, and now that was really cool yeah and i mean i feel like this is the answer to the question what would it be like if there was force stuff in andor it would be like this it would be tense and yeah. unpredictable and mm, scary yeah. so i yeah it came off really well and uh there'll there'll be some stuff in uh in episode four as well um i wanted to touch on the um for lack of a better term let's call it fan service that we get in episode four because there are certain things that are paid off from earlier in the earlier in the game which are also paying off your interest in particular different parts of star wars media right and we've been doing this all along but like there are some like big hype moments in this episode that that are very much grounded in if you liked the clone wars bam this is your thing right how um how did you balance that because I we've been you've been going for this very very unique specific aesthetic, uh, the the street Star Wars, and then um, if you put in too much of the like cosmic space battle sort of stuff, it kind of like dilutes that. So how did you balance that going into it, Jason? It's 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 the adage of less is more, right? Like it's alluding to. Um alluding to things and so Tanal's reveal in uh episode two about a secret in her family that mm. then carries forward right um by not showing that overtly by not nod and winking to it by not uh, you know having any you know obvious easter eggs right away um just helps like because the same secret that that may has carried about vilra since the start of the game diana has carried about tanal since the start of the game secrets about her family and then those secrets start to get revealed just as vilra's secrets start to get revealed less is more day in the life we're street level we're, we're dealing with the here and now we're dealing with the immediate concern the immediate discovery the immediate excitement the immediate fear but there's things that are happening in the background that start coming up and so um, you know, getting to do those callbacks to, like I said, everybody's got their sort of favorite era of play or their favorite media, um, having a connection point there, which for me was always going to be part of it. Um, but um, but uh, the reveal of uh, the, the the reveal of Tenal, the secret in Tanal's family, that was Diana the player's idea. That was uh, their contribution to that character to say, this is what I want the family dynamic to be. This is what I want the background of some of these family characters to be. And that was like, oh, that's phenomenal because that's such a great, it's such an easy tie-in for me now. And again, we can just play it cool and then wait for the right moment for things to get revealed. And I had like certain things like the, there's a conversation that happens in episode four between uh, Tanal and her stepfather that I had in the back of my mind but I didn't know where in the story that conversation was when that when in that conversation was going to take place. Yeah. And it was just a beautiful segue moment in the scene where the family is talking to have that moment with Tanal and her stepfather. And Diana said that that was a very, uh, a very moving uh, conversation for her as well, which was just the cherry on the Sunday for me in terms of knowing that there was a there great opportunity there and then getting the player emotional buy-in where it was like, yeah, it's meaningful because the player has had that slow burn to this point, just along with the audience. Yeah, just picking the correct 
um, powerful emotional context where it would it would land. And I mean, I think you you and Diana did that so well. Like that was one of the best scenes in this um, forthcoming episode. And you'll all know which one we're talking about when it happens. Or oh, yeah. they'll point it out in the in the chat. So don't, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. Also, if we do go quiet in the chat, it's probably because we're all doing this. Like you know what you know because <laughs> I will tune in and be like, oh, this is that moment. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Hey May, have you have you shared quadrilateral with friends, loved ones, RPG fans, anybody in your life that? maybe knew you were doing this or wasn't really paying attention that you're doing this and then you've shared it with them afterwards that is that has sort of just appreciated it and come back to let you know how they what they thought of it yeah uh, my fiance mostly because we would record and then he'd be like oh how'd it go and i'd be like you have to watch like mm -hmm. i'd start to talk about it because of course i had the like after recording excited jitters um and so i would start to talk and, and i'd be like the reveal is too good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's, he's really, he, you know, he, he enjoys it because he's also a Star Wars person. Um, so, I mean, nerds stick with nerds typically. So, um, nice. I, yeah. And, and I've just, you know, I've been mostly just promoting it on like Twitter and stuff. Cause yeah. I have, I, a lot of my, I have like vanilla friends that aren't that I would be like, oh, I'm doing this thing. They'd be like, so you play Star Wars? I'm like, yeah, like, so you pretend to Star Wars? And I'd be like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, and, you. and they would be like, we support this. I don't know how to do that. So um, <laughs> some people know, and they've, you know, just been like, yay, that's very cool. I'll, like, I'll watch if I can, or um, yeah. Yeah. that kind of thing. I got a few of those friends too. Absolutely. Yeah, where they're like, so, okay, so you have fun doing a Star Wars. And I'll be like, cool. Thank you. Where I have to be like, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, but Star Wars and different dice and rules. And it's very different. And they're like, but you pretend. And I'm like, yes, I pretend. <laughs> like acting with rules. No, I, I really become a space engineer. <laughs> yes. I grow <laughs> these horns. Are, these are my horns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, but it's been it's been really good. Yeah, the fact that I've been holding it for my fiance and like making him watch um <laughs> was really hard to do because I could get so excited and want to talk about it um that was tough but he got some spoilers because I'm the worst <laughs> no it's totally fair it's all good. Mm -hmm. apparently my parents who are retired and live like on a winery down in California go to wine tastings and stuff and periodically yeah. someone will ask about their kids and and they'll tell the story about well you know they, they do this and that and one of them's an author and he does a stream and like one out of eight people or something will go what <laughs> and so we've been pushing them toward you know quadrilateral and uh, other mm -hmm. dungeon scrawlers stuff and like it's it's fun to just spread the word like that and just go pull people into it people who have no idea what's even going on or have never met me don't don't know me other than the stories that my parents tell them yeah which are all all true i'm sure mm -hmm. only the good stuff is true only there the good go. stuff there is we true. go that's yeah. the clarification anyway i will yeah. say i've met great people doing this though so like i'm yes. so thankful that like i did get the email that was like hey we think you'd be cool and then I got to meet, the, like, I got to meet y'all and the other players. And I was like, oh, I feel, I have made friends. This is nice. Like, it wasn't where we like, okay, we're coming and we're playing, we're leaving. Um, you know, I feel, I would very much in real life hang out with all of y'all and all these, you know what I'm Same. saying? Like, yeah, totally. I don't feel like this is just a, you know, not business transaction. Yeah. This There's wasn't, not really a this transaction, wasn't a but. Right. This wasn't a gig. Like it was very much like, oh, okay, these are fun people. These are good people, and I, I feel like I've made some friends, and that's always really nice. Because I, I need, I have 100%. a fair amount of nerd friends, but oh no, that's true. I told my gaming group, and I'm making them watch too. So uh, my, my, my boys <laughs> in my home game. Um, as well, they should. As well, they as well should. They I'm gonna bother them again on Discord and make sure they're watching tonight too. Um, yeah. one of who was by GM for a at home Star Wars game, so. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Where I played a mechanic in that one too. So there you go. Uh, I need to branch out. It is really cool how this game has pulled us together. Like yeah. tabletop role playing games do that, you know. And mm -hmm. yeah. and sometimes it it falls apart and you go your separate ways and you're like, well, I played in this game once upon a time. But it's it's those games where you you know you really make friends with people and you really enjoy the story together and it just forges those relationships. Yeah. We should all get together at some point. I mean, we're in yes. far flung parts of the of the country, and some of us aren't <laughs> even in the same country, Jason. But Ken, like you and you your know? maple syrup. <laughs> Conventions are a thing. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll meet up one thing. of these days. And you know what? It's always possible that we're gonna have season two one of these days. Mm. Mm. Anyway, we have to uh, go to a commercial break and then we're going to get to episode four of Quadrilateral. So thank you, Jason. Thank you, May. Uh, look forward to the episode. Don't go away until I see you next. May the force be with you.